are black on rations with 200 starving refugees below deck. The captain has ordered us to... You're down to captain. Change course now. We have one shot to your future. And we're going to take it. London is three feet underwater, the failed capital of a failed state. Why Oz rerouted the exodus there was a mystery, one that only heightened when Captain Kimball Irish Graves went ashore alone and returned with a bleeding marine, a briefcase, and instructions for an ocean rendezvous. It should have been a simple handoff, but something made Irish change his mind. Trace of fire from three condors peppered the deck as we ran headlong into a Category 5 storm for cover. The explosions ripped my eardrums as I hid. Whatever was in that briefcase was clearly worth more to Oz than the 200 no-pats on this ship. Valiant task force fought through a hellscape of bullets and shrapnel. The watertight door shielding us below deck exploded off its hinges. A blood-soaked soldier came barreling in and found what he was looking for. Leverage. Irish's seven-year-old son, Omar. Irish later explained to me that he originally joined Oz because he agreed that no pats needed to unify if they were ever going to have a place in the world. The difference is that Oz thinks that will only happen if the old world dies. That's why he wants a war, so America and Russia will burn each other to the ground. Problem is, the Nopats will burn with them. Irish's looks harden as he plays with a pair of dog tags in his hands. When he was a Marine, he'd seen the cost of war on civilians firsthand. That's the reason he quit. In Oz and Irish, I saw two men fighting for no-pat survival, but through very different means. One was trying to stay out of America and Russia's reach, and the other was actively trying to manipulate them. That's what the intel in that briefcase was all about. Coordinates to an American secret the Russians wanted. Bait to draw the superpowers into an all-out war. That night during the battle when Oz's man took Irish's son, something changed. A no-pat, a child, needed me. I knew what Rao or Angel or Falk would do, what I had to do. I'm no soldier, but I ran after him anyway. Then I heard the American soldier Irish shot in London, Clayton Pukowski, handcuffed to a gurney promising to help. He had that same look I'd seen in the specialists along this journey. I released him. The sacrifice he made later saved Irish's son, but the intel slipped into the open. After a year on this assignment, I'd found the answer I was looking for. The no-pats are everything people say they are. Smugglers, sinners, saints, and so much more. The world created the non-patriated and then blamed them for its problems. But now this task force might be the very key to saving it. When the smoke cleared, we could all see the look in our captain's eyes. Oz had to be stopped from setting the world on fire. Irish had gone from marine to no pat but he was still just a soldier taking orders. Now, now he knew he had to lead. I watched from the bridge as Irish took the comms and put out a call, not knowing who would answer. Only one way to stop this war. That's to get in the middle of it. Put a call out to any notepad who will listen. 36 hours to door. Get ready. You fight! 